So this is an ultra rare group of disorders. It's uh, been very undertreated. In fact, Proteus syndrome, we've the first clinical trial ever to test an agent. Right now, unfortunately, these patients have only surgery and um, preventative type measures to uh, look forward to. So this will be the first potential treatment option for them. The patients present e normally at a young age, around two-ish, with some kind of overgrowth, either a leg that's growing quickly, a deformity under the foot, which often occurs a big, horrible sort of cauliflower mass that forms under their feet, or other bony protrudence. Um, so they present, and as they grow, so these masses grow out of proportion to the rest of their body. What we did, well, it's actually most of the work was done by the NIH. They discovered that this specific disorder was a result of, an, of a mutation in little nests that were formed in the, in the embryo. So it's not like a germline mutation where every cell has the mutation. It's basically just little nests of cells in the uterus in that, that for whatever reason pick up this mutation. And then as the person grows, those nests grow out of control. And no one ever knows when the nest is going to start growing aggressively or where. So it's terrifying in a way for a mother or a, or a kid to know, okay, I've got this long leg growing, I've got this new bum coming, you know, how aggressively are these different bumps are going to fall. So what we did, and the NIH actually came to us because they discovered the AKT mutation, they then took our drug, took tissue from these patients, grew it up in the lab, and then tested it with our drug, and found that tiny amounts of drug were able to inhibit the growth of those fibroblasts. Then went into man, where they did the same thing. They administered this to six patients at the NIH at really small doses, and they saw exactly the same thing. They took tissue before and after, and they saw that the signal was abated, and there was a rest of growth. And in fact, in the kids, maybe a little bit improvement. This was at the low dose. The next step for the Proteus syndrome group is really to start a clinical trial for possible approval. The challenges in bringing this forward is there's about 200 people in the world. Maybe the NIH has a database of about 60, but there's very few people that are actually known to have all the signs, symptoms and the AKT mutation. However, what we've learned from Proteus disease, we're taking to the family of disease called Pros. Because following exactly the same path, we're able to inhibit the signaling and proliferation in other similar disorders where PR3K mutations are present. And that's a much bigger population. So we're also studying that um, on a, with a, a group of investigators at Boston Children's and Italy. So we will be this, uh, sort of this, uh, studying the two in parallel to see which, which is more effective and, and, and how the different diseases grow. So that's a little bit about our program there. Um, you know, really the, the, the experience for me has been amazing going into such a rare disease where this, these are the first studies ever for patients in Proteus and uh, trying to see if there's something we can actually offer these patients other than amputations or you know horrible course um, as they go through. The last thing I want to say about the disease and how it nicely fits with oncology. We had a, about 25% of the Proteus patients develop cancer early on. Either the, the girls develop ovarian or gynae related cancers and the boys develop testicular or sometimes other cancers that are, that are known to grow a certain way. We got requests from a young 15 year old in Italy with both severe Proteus disease and ovarian cancer. We were able to treat her on a compassionate use basis and saw a dramatic change in both her cancer, which is now a partial remission, 
and her Proteus disease. When she came to us, she was basically palliative care, really in, in, in not a good way, where she couldn't get out of the chair even to sleep. And now needed two people to take her up and down. Now she's able to transfer herself. Her, her movement has improved significantly and she's now you know, in a much better functional state and able to uh, do much more than she could before we started the therapy. Rare, but really exciting to bring something to a group of patients for which there's nothing. The last thing I will say, because you guys come from the rare disease, I worked on other rare cancers and what I've seen is as soon as you make people aware of a disease for which no therapy exists, a lot more people come out of the woodwork. Because a lot of them end up unfortunately at doctors, the doctors say, listen, there's nothing I can do, there's no therapies, you know, and as soon as you make people more aware of the disease, they come in and we can at least try new therapies and see if we can help this group of patients. Mm.